Okay, another Lamar Aysmo video. Here we go. Let's keep it going with Mikhail Bakunin quotes and commentary from yours truly. Uh, this is uh, one of my, I um, guess you could say one of the uh, biggest uh, heroes from history that have uh, influenced me. I have a eclectic uh, collection of people who I um, read their biography or their philosophy and it, it, it is inspirational to me. Uh, we'll, we'll, this will be another ongoing uh, project for this channel uh, in addition to exposing um, the um, what people like to call the uh, New World Order and the other um, uh, you know um, what can you call it the other um, names that people attribute to the people who actually do govern and have the uh, money and power in the modern world but Let's continue with Bakunin. Uh, the realization of human brotherhood was impossible so long as states existed, and that the real abolition of classes, the political and social equalization of individuals will be possible only through the equalization of the economic means of education, instruction, labor, and life for everyone. Nevertheless, one cannot reprove the 18th century for not having understood this social science is not created and studied solely in books it needs the great lessons of history and we had to have the revolution of 1789 and 1793 we had to undergo the experiences of 1830 and 1848 and uh, in the prior video I mentioned that Bakunin actually participated in some of these um, revolutions especially 1848 so he wasn't a um, a tribal socialist like uh, Karl Marx. He was actually an individual who uh, practiced what he preached and fought for what he believed in. And again, I, I, my comparison was like a Che Guevara type um, actually um, fought and uh, wasn't some um, someone who hung out behind the scenes and took all the credit but did do, you know, don't do anything uh, uh, useful and bringing about the uh, ideal, but after the coup d'état of the first uh, of the first Napoleon, Freemasonry became an imperial institution throughout a large part of the European continent. So, it's more proof for for those because we talked about this too in the alternative media. You have those who like to blame everything on the tribe. I'm not one of them. I know for some of my viewers, it seems like that. Like I'm always talking about the trap. Part of the reasons I have no choice. A lot of, especially when you talk about contemporary issues, the tribe have a lot to do with um, many of the problems that are occurring around the world. And, and you wouldn't know it, but if you did research, like um, like human trafficking of Eastern European women and, and women from other parts of the world to um, the colony in Southwest Asia on the Mediterranean uh, they have women from Eastern Europe and other places um, being brutalized and their networks also take women from Eastern Europe to other parts of the world to be um, uh, put in prostitution rings and to be brutalized uh, there was also a um, scandal involving members of the tribe from Italy and from Russia they actually had a uh, child snuff film uh, killing ring going on in Italy and Russia and they were actually busted. It was suppressed in our media, only the BBC reported it, but they didn't name the tribe. They just said um, Russian, they said uh, Russians and Italians, but they didn't say um, the uh, religious affiliation. But so, you know, so in addition to them, you do have other organizations and occult groups like uh, the Freemasons interesting side note a lot of freemasonry comes from the kabbalah uh the kabbalah is a um a book um in judaism that's um i haven't read it and i, I don't ever plan on reading it because from what i heard it's actually um their version of luciferianism and um i'm not gonna subject myself to swimming through another sewer i'm already reading one on thelema and thelema is, is, is similar it's a more um, updated and modern version of freemasonry another secret society uh, hidden beliefs uh, maybe not so hidden because they do have a lot of published work um, with their doctrine but continuing on 
It is known that all the principal actors of the first revolution were Freemasons and that when the revolution broke out, it was able to find, uh, thanks to Freemasons, friends and devoted and powerful collaborators in all other countries. So that just shows you the reach of Freemasonry even back then. In the 17 and 1800s, they already had, it's, it's, again, it's similar to the tribe. It was already an international um, religious group and, um, you know, it had a lot of um, power for that reason. Uh, another quote from Bakunin, in this epic, the bourgeoisie too had created an international association, a universal and formidable one, Freemasonry. It would be a, a substantial error to judge the Freemason of the last century or even that of the first of the present century by what is today. The bourgeoisie institution par excellence, Freemasonry in its development, in its growing power at first and later in its decline represented in a way the development power and moral and intellectual uh, decadence of the bourgeoisie so that's uh, Bakunin writing in the 1800s uh, about Freemasons the mere and odious tyranny a cowardly submission and the absolute negation of all individuals mm. uh, see that the one problem with this Kindle uh, sometimes you don't get the quote um, I'm trying to remember what the mirror was but I can't really elaborate on that because the context is missing I'm, I apologize for that the despotism of the husband of the father oh sorry I've got one of these touch screen uh, computers and some moths just landed uh, technology but um Uh, one thing I don't like about Bakunin, and I'm glad I came across this quote, and that I can agree with, and uh, if you read some of his works, um, it's his whole, because, and, and you got to understand the reason why he probably felt this way was um, the the world he he was uh, born into, and the early part of his life, like we prior video, he was a Russian nobleman who renounced his uh, privileges and his titles in order to study abroad and to actually be a socialist but um, um you, you see some similarities with Marx in his um, rejection of um the inst certain things like the faith you'll see him talk of, and, and it's obvious why he was against religion is because uh, he was against hypocrisy but um for me becoming an atheist is a um a big leap uh you know in terms of uh, you know you can reject religion because we see the, the problems and the side effects we get, especially with the religions that are, are more popular uh, in our current times. It's the hypocrisy and their willingness to um, uh, facilitate injustice and the so evil is um, astounding. I'm talking about all religions, um, especially the Abrahamic. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it sucks. Um, and the same can be applied to Hinduism. I mean, you want some injustice and some um, belief that would, um, I guess, uh, stifle uh, justice and the equality in society. Hinduism is um, part excellence of that. Uh, from out of the depths of the proletarian, there emerged a new and opposing tendency a new universal objective the abolition the abolition of all class and their main base of support the state and the self-administration of all property by the workers uh, again at, during his time the you know, states I mean individual rights for people were um, you know almost non-existent we saw um, even though this was four centuries earlier the likes of Jill DeRay we talked about him and he wasn't the only one there's others Elizabeth Bathory there's a laundry list of monarchs you can name and, and privileged individuals who and, and again we talked about even in our current times um, the uh, Franklin cover-up and the um, cover-up that went along in Belgium it's um, astounding how much uh, you can get away with and how horribly you can mistreat people if you're um, born into um wealth and privilege it's um you could get away with almost anything it seems like 
And uh, another quote, and just as the capitalist production must, to avoid bankruptcy, continually expand by absorbing its weaker competitors and drive to monopolize all the other capitalist enterprises all over the world, so much so must the modern state inevitably drive to become the only universal state since the coexistence of two universal states is by definition absolutely impossible uh, again this is relevant today the united states and the soviet union uh, is a good example of that and uh, even with the collapse of the soviet union look the, the Na that didn't stop nato kept expanding nato kept existing because remember the original purpose of NATO was to counter the Warsaw Pact. The Warsaw Pact didn't exist anymore as of the uh, 1990s, the mid 1990s. There was no Soviet Union or Warsaw Pact left. Russia was actually in a state of uh, internal chaos and um, it was really selling itself and on its way to becoming the Africa of Europe until um, Vladimir Putin intervened. So Russia was not a threat. It wasn't expanded. It wasn't threatening its neighbors. Uh, and the, the Baltic states are the, the Baltic states are just one of the many um, uh, nations that are actually. It seems like they're trying to um, create conditions for World War Three. You know, it's it's inexplicable how um, you know once they got their independence. It's a shame that they instead of maintaining their independence. They wanted to join the EU and then uh, NATO. It's just, it's, you know, put a target on yourself. Um, it's, it's crazy. But uh, the United States is a universal state. We, in, you know, we're everywhere. Over a hundred bases. Oh, I'm sorry, it may be more than that. I know we have bases in over a hundred countries. I think there's um, hundreds of bases. I think the amount of bases may be uh, close to the thousands. So. Uh, another prophetic quote from Bakunin uh, Federalist organizations from the bottom upward of workers, associations, groups, communes, cantons, this is counties, um, is, I guess it has it in brackets, regions, and finally whole peoples is the sole condition for true non fictitious freedom. But such freedom violates the interests and convictions of the ruling class just as economic self-determination is incompatible with methods of organization um you know it's i can't you know that's one of those things that it would be nice if it could happen but i, I seriously doubt it ever will we um average people we love to um, hate each other uh, we like to get into minutia um, we like to get into details about each other and about people within our own groups. Good case in point of that is Afro-Americans. There are more Afro-Americans on YouTube um, who it seems like from their rhetoric they hate Afro-Americans. It, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's really funny, you know. So if we can't get along within our own uh, ethno-linguistic groups and come up with a just, uh, equitable society, on a mass scale because it does happen in small communities and within um, smaller groups but there's no hope for uh, humanity getting into a, um, a just uh, universal federation where average people uh, look out for each other's rights and uh, freedom that's I don't have that much faith in uh, humanity I'm not an idealist I think we'll spend more time making a uh, hate propaganda up against each other uh, for things that in the long run really either can't be solved they don't really matter as much in the, in the big picture but we'll keep doing that and the rich will keep getting richer and we'll, our lives will keep getting worse um, funny side note before I conclude this video is that um, you know I, I recall reading this book published in the 50s that said that um, by the 90s the work the average work day for the average worker would only be four hours because of technology <laughs> nothing could be further technology is actually um, I think ultimately is going to make us uh, pretty much obsolete especially to the elite and when that happens it will be interesting to see what they do with us but uh, on that positive note I'll end it here see you in a future video